Hey guys, what's going on? This Two's Guide, this Two's Commentary, I should say, is sponsored by Squad OV, one of the best applications you should be using to improve in Arena. You can break down all your games, look exactly what happened, literally second by second. It takes two seconds to install and it's free. You can see how someone died, what abilities they were using, where your damage peaked and where their damage peaked, all this kind of stuff that you normally can't see with uh, even just recording your games. Like it's not only more convenient and simple than like recording it via Streamlabs or Shadowplay, but it gives you far more detail. Um, and I think in my opinion, watching your own games back, identifying mistakes you're making and you know building on that is the best way to improve in WoW and pretty much anything, right? So this makes it really, really simple. You can watch your games back. You can listen to even your comms. You can listen to what people are calling. Um, the thing is absolutely crazy. I would recommend it even if I wasn't sponsored by them. And it is just a pleasure to be sponsored by something I actually believe in. All right, guys. Hope you enjoy the commentary. Take it easy. Peace out. Hey, guys. What's going on? So today we're talking about beating mirrors and what to do in mirrors, big mistakes I've made. Um, and generally, well, I think we're going to, have to look at two clips because the first clip is very short, but I think it's still useful for a lot of you guys who are playing against the mirror um, to kind of see what you should be doing and, and how to play against it. Um, and yeah, we'll jump right into it here. If you are interested in supporting the channel, please like, subscribe, check out the Twitch, check out the Patreon if you're looking for coaching or VOD review as well. All right, let's jump into the game. Um, obviously, we're playing Disarm here. I like Death Sentence, so I can chase a Druid as well. Um, and, and I'm Kyrian, and obviously Sharp and Blade. Um, I've been playing, what's it called, uh, Shackle in all these games. Um, this is kind of first week, so it was quite a while ago when a lot of these clips were recorded. Um, so take it with a grain of salt. Um, what I do here is I open the Warrior. I don't really want to commit anything too big. Just overpower, mortal strike him. There's bleeds on him now, and my Druid runs away. And, you know, what I'm doing here is I could Stormbolt, but, like, as you see here, I can stop this, uh, what's it called, clone, because now I've got the stun. And unfortunately, his warrior stuns my druid as well, so they just weren't on the same page. Um, so the stun comes out onto the druid, I stun, I see he warbreakers, I disarm him, and then what I do here is I put on uh, sweeping, so if he chases me, he's in trouble, um, and we just have more damage and more damage, like he just can't recover. The warrior here gets the intervene off, but then what we do is you throw the shackle, and then I just line, and unfortunately he doesn't want to jump out and dispel this. And then he gets stunned again, and the game is that quickly over. The reason why, in my opinion, trinketing disarms when you've used your offensives is really, really useful, um, sometimes, is that when you get those clean openers where you disrupt their entire thing and they're both stunned and they're both in trouble, um, you know, you can trinket the storm bolt, which is three seconds. However, trinketing the disarm is something that is like six seconds, right? Like you can't get out of the disarm. You can't do anything in it really. Um, whereas the storm bolt is annoying, but you can sort of, sort of still connect and do damage right afterwards. It's, it's a bit shorter. Um, trinketing the storm bolt is more of a defensive play. Whereas trinketing the disarm is more of an offensive play. In my opinion, when you're versing like a mirror, you want to be as aggressive as possible when you play safe. When you're trying to peel in line, you end up losing because the warrior just gets cleave damage. So that one's a short one, and we're gonna we're gonna follow it up with way more mirrors. Don't worry, in one sec. So I thought I'd also include this clip because this is a short one too, and it's against a prop alley, <laughs> um, which you know we're seeing more of now. Like I, I mean, we did see a lot of them last season, but I thought like with the nerf they wouldn't be too viable. However, they still are. Um, in this instance, you know it's a fury warrior. They do insane damage when they have recklessness. Um, and you want to be doing as much, you know, cleave as possible. I like hitting the, the Paladin because you get massive condemns. But here I do a big go on the Pally. I want to force him down. I've got Sharpen on him. Um, Paladin's like pro protection takes a lot of damage. Um, so I get a Shackle on him and it sits. It's pretty big, but, you know, nothing really comes of it. So, you know, may maybe a bit of a bad Shackle because he already wings. He has healing, all this kind of stuff. And because I'm going around the pillar, I Blade Storm, as you see there. If you watch, let me go back one second. Um, here's the reason I blade storm, right? They're both like pulling around the pillar and my druid is like running away, like his line. Um, they're probably like, let, like the warrior has no storm bolt, obviously, but I'm in B stance and I'm going around a pillar. So I blade storm and if you see right there, he hodges into it because, you know, I don't know if you forgot the blade storm immunes it, you know, not trying to be toxic. I guess it's like 
maybe he just had it in mind he wanted to hodge so badly and the blade song did start like a second later um, but then we just immune that stun and I, i'm just like swapping a lot to to what i can hit and what i feel like is taking damage um, here, you know, he's, he's got freedom and he's got horse, so I can't really do anything to him as well. Fortunately, he misses the spear. I disarm here, which is just bad. Um, I should just wait for recklessness, uh, and this is a huge mistake in my opinion. Um, I do have thorns here, and he can't really do anything in this, but still not something good to do. Um, I swap here onto the, the paladin because he's next to me, um, and I intervene my druid as well. This is also really, really bad intervene. Um, it's double DPS, they're both melee. I should be holding intervene parry till the warrior connects with wall breaker and a stun. Um, but we just waste it there. Um, and this is where I'd actually want to be intervened. Um, so really, really rough. What I do here is I'm trying to fear actually and look how much damage this does. Like this is insane. Um, and you can see the extent of the mistakes I made like instantly. Those two decisions to firstly disarm and then intervene through the game. I don't even know why I pressed intervene there. But you can sort of see. It doesn't throw the game. Um, but, you know, this guy's committing and I think he's just seeing blood because he goes a bit deep. And there's the sack. Um, you know, I'm trying to, I think, get in. i trying to help out as much as possible. I fear this guy and he gets a full fleshy off and then we recover, okay? So not too bad, but, you know, you can kind of see the extent of those mistakes. Um, now I'm dropped in HP because Bladestorm from Fury Warriors pumps. Like that thing is massive. Sorry for the uh, frame issues here. When, when you unpause the video sometimes on this player, it, it really bugs out. Um, so here we are trying to recover the game. Um, made a massive mistake there. So really big to just make sure you just hold cooldowns for um, actual ghosts rather than just using your defensive cooldowns randomly. You can just see how much the game is like, like if I just use the buttons at the right time, that this game is over so much faster. Um, I shatter this and I stun the warrior. Um, the reason I shatter here is just to cleave, honestly. I've got a lot of damage out and both of them are taking it and the game's over. But that game was so much harder than it needed to be just because of those two mistakes, you know? So burn that into your memory. It definitely gets burnt into mine every time I do some stupid things like that. All right, on to the next clip. Okay. So, um, this is a Warrior Arsham versus Warrior Arsham mirror. Um, something that is, you know, interesting. I think I made a lot of mistakes in this matchup. So, you know, it's something to, to look at later. So here I don't instantly charge the, the Shaman. I kind of expected to, to duel a little bit there, but I didn't get a slow on him, which was insanely bad. Like, you know, nuts bad. But somehow I get that death, uh, like here. The, the door of shadows. However, the second I, I charge this warrior, um, he blade storms and I disarm into it. Like it kind of like, you know, was pretty predictable as well. I probably should have just waited. So I get the fear off here onto the, um, what's it called? Shaman. And I swap onto the shaman as well. Uh, he drops a fear on me. I'm sort of like hiding around here and we just play this game so badly. Um, I don't really know how we win. <laughs> But the warrior can't connect to me as well because I'm just like running. And the second I see the warrior run to me, um, I, what's it called? Stun him and he instantly trinkets. So what I do is I wall breaker he, and I parry, right? And that's so he can't disarm it. Um, I actually do turn my back to him. So if he went for the disarm there, he would have gotten it. Um, that was a super greedy parry, by the way. Like that, that parry was, was uh, you know, frustration type parry. I get disarmed late here, which is actually a much bigger deal than you think, because now his disarm should largely be desync to my Colossal Smash if I use my Colossal Smash on cooldown. Um, so here we're getting some decent pressure here. I'm kind of swapping between them um, and just like, I don't want to take cleave as much as possible. And I see as a spear in 10 seconds because he's playing Kyrian. Um, I blaze storm this root and I get on top of him again. Um, it's really, really big to try and save, especially into shamans, your avatar and blade storm for roots, uh, because they make a huge difference. Um, during that, the Arsham actually gets a hex. However, the hex isn't too useful because he brings the word right to me in B stance or in D stance, sorry, and they get cleaved a little bit. Um, I get some decent pressure off here and now we're in it together. Like I'm inside his, uh, spear. I intervene the spear. I disarm uh, like really late on the Colossal Smash as well. Um, not very good to do. Uh, again, you know, bit of a mistake. I think I was playing this game really sloppy. 
Um, but here I'm like just going for the kill. Like one of the biggest things against Venthyr um, here is that you just do so much damage. I get the shackle off here and he's kind of just in this issue now where like the shaman just doesn't have the globals to keep this dude up. Um, I get the intervene off, which lets my shaman cast anything he really wants, um, you know, if he needs to. And we don't, I don't even know. Yeah, we kick the hex there, which is really, really lucky. Um, and we get the uh, condemn. So a bit of a rough game. Um, rough matchup. Main thing against Warrior vs. Warrior is you need to like make sure you don't mess up your intervenes. Uh, so your your disarm timing. It doesn't even matter if they disarm, like if you disarm into a blade storm by accident, because at least for the next blade storm or like sorry, next wall breaker, you have disarm off cooldown. Um, it's only a really big issue when you use it like 15 seconds after a condemn, because now you're never going to be able to disarm a condemn. And you're gonna have to like it just throws the entire game off and the pacing. So decentish game, um, sim like pretty high MMR for uh, the first day. So we're gonna hop into one more.